Hello and welcome back to another PC troubleshooting video where I'm going to be trying to fix a broken PC. So this is a newly built gaming PC. Whenever we flip the power switch, the PC does power on, but there's no post on the monitor. So in terms of the specs in the system, we've got Azrox B650E Steel Legend motherboard. For the CPU, we've got AMD's brand new Ryzen 7. It's the 9700X being cooled with an air killer. We've got 32 gigabytes of DDR5 and we've got the Aorus Master RTX 4070. So my first thoughts on looking at the PC, there's two things that are drawing my attention. The first is this is RGB RAM and it's not actually lighting up. And we've got one of our debug LEDs illuminated on the motherboard. So if we zoom in, you'll see that it's our CPU LED that is illuminated. So I have made a guide to troubleshooting a PC that won't post. You'll find links to it in the description. But there's all the simple things you're going to do. You're going to check your connections at the graphics card and the monitor. Check your monitor actually works with another device. Check your graphics card is properly seated. Probably take it out, reinsert it. Check all your cables are properly plugged in. With a CPU light illuminated, one of the things you'd be worried about is the EPS cables. Are they properly plugged in? Given that the motherboard actually powers on, we know our 24 pin cable should be plugged in okay. And check the connections at the power supply. Um, you may want to reset the CMOS as well. All sensible things to do when you've got your CPU light illuminated. But I'm not actually going to do any of these today because this is a PC that I would not expect to work given the specs I've told you. So because we do have one of AMD's new 9000 series CPUs, it's installed in a B650E motherboard. This motherboard was out well before this CPU existed. And if this is a newly built gaming PC, the chances are the BIOS hasn't been updated. So the current version of the BIOS shouldn't work with a CPU out of the box. And I think a BIOS update is probably all we're going to need to do to get this PC up and running. So if you can't get your PC to post, it can be quite difficult to work out what version of the BIOS your motherboard has installed on in it. Now, ASRock are quite good. They do put a little sticker on the motherboard telling you the version of the BIOS. And our sticker for this motherboard is just up behind here. It's not the easiest to get you a shot of it, but it does say 1.03. They do normally put the sticker somewhere where it's a little bit easier to see. Here's another ASRock motherboard where you can see the version of the BIOS installed is 1.01. .01. Okay, so we head over to our motherboards page, click on the BIOS and scan down. We can see the version we have got installed, 1.03 is actually the first released version of the BIOS. There's been an awful lot of updates um, as time has gone along. And you can see here the next generation Ryzen processor support comes in at 3.01. And there's actually a version past that, 3.06. So it's not a big surprise our PC isn't working because this version of the BIOS is not going to be compatible with the version of the CPU that's in it. So to get our PC up and running, we are going to have to update the BIOS to a version of the BIOS that is compatible with the latest 9000 series CPUs. Now there is two ways to do this. Because our motherboard does have a BIOS flashback button on the back of it, that's going to be the easiest and simple way of doing it. If we didn't have that on our motherboard, there'd be only one way to do it, and that would be to take a compatible CPU so one of the earlier 7000 series CPUs, put it into the motherboard, update the BIOS, then change back to our 9000 series CPU. If you don't have another compatible CPU, AMD will lend you one. All you need to do is head over to their website, create an account, and then request they send you a boot kit. AMD will then loan you a CPU, allowing you to update your BIOS, and then you obviously send it back to them once you've done that. So because our motherboard does have a BIOS flashback button, we should be able to get this PC up and running in about 10 minutes. To do this, all we're going to need is a USB drive and ideally one that's under 32 gigabytes in size. So I've gone ahead and plugged our drive into another PC. If we just check the properties of the drive, we are going to want to have it formatted in FAT32. So we are going to have to format this drive. To do that, all we need to do is right click, click on Format. We're going to select uh, FAT32 and we'll click on Start. And everything on this drive is going to be erased. So if there's any data on it that you need, make sure you back it up. And when we click on our drive now, you can see it's now formatted in FAT32. So we head back over to the BIOS page for our motherboard. I'm going to download the latest version of the BIOS. So we'll click on it and download it. Now, if you need instructions for how to do this, you're going to find them here. The standard method for updating the BIOS is here. We're going to use the flashback method. So you can click here, you'll get the instructions for doing this, and it will vary slightly between motherboard manufacturers. So we can then head over to our downloads folder. We're going to extract the BIOS. 
And then we're gonna to need to rename the bias file so we can click on it. And we're gonna call it creative.rom. We're then gonna to want to copy the file. And we'll head over to our flash drive and we're gonna paste it onto the root folder of the flash drive. So you're not gonna to want to create any additional folders. It needs to be on the main folder in the flash drive. Now you are gonna to have to plug your USB drive into the right port on the back of the motherboard. You'll find it labeled in your manual, but in general, there isn't a light line lined it and some of them actually have it labeled as bias flashback on it. So this one here is the one we're gonna to want to plug into. It's got the black outline around it. We're then gonna to want to turn our power supply on but we aren't actually gonna to want to turn the PC on. So it's just the power supply on, but not pressing the power button on the PC. And then all we're gonna do is hold the bias flashback button in for about three seconds. So you'll notice now this is flashing green. So our bias is currently being updated. What is really important is that we don't actually power the PC off because if we power the PC off during this process, there's a very good chance we're gonna brick our motherboard. So don't do anything that's gonna cause your electricity to go off. Don't touch anything or move anything that we're gonna pull a cable out. Leave things alone and wait for this light to stop flashing. Okay, so the light has stopped flashing. It took about six minutes to update the bias so we can now safely remove our USB drive. Okay, so now for the moment of truth, we need to see have we fixed the problem with the BIOS update. So we can go ahead and flip the power button and our PC is lighting up and we'll just have to wait and see if we get a post on the monitor. So a good sign, we've now got RGB in our RAM, which we didn't have before. And there we go, we've got a post on the monitor. So we've managed to fix this PC with a BIOS update. Fairly simple problem, but I do think it is worth going through, particularly when people will be thinking of getting new processors and pairing them with older motherboards. If this hadn't solved my problem, what I then would be doing is the other steps I've shown in my troubleshooting video, and I'll put a link to that video in the description. If you have enjoyed this video, please remember to give it a thumbs up, and if you're not currently subscribed to the channel, please hit the subscribe button as well. Thanks for watching.